I've built, played with, and tested essentially all the weapons in Warframe. And I gotta be honest with you, there hasn't been a single one that felt better than the Baza or the Baza Prime. And today, my friends, we have an absolute treat. We're gonna be revisiting this absolutely glorious weapon. Not just the Prime, but also the regular version. Since there is not a whole lot of difference between the two, we're gonna tackle both of them in today's guide. We're gonna have an introductory level setup, something that a more casual or newer Tenno can get into. But fear not, my veteran friends, we will get to see the Baza and the Baza Prime with a fully souped up setup going against Steel Path enemies. That said though, please bear in mind that my building guides usually take a more new player friendly tone. That's because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Baza and or the Baza Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Baza and or the Baza Prime are SMGs or submachine guns, or you can even call them assault rifles, that's fine. The point is, you point, you shoot, and you win, my friends. This is a 100% accurate weapon. It doesn't really matter the distance between you and said target. Look at this, 43 meters. And still, the needles or the projectiles that the weapon fires land essentially mostly within the same area. Look at this. Beautiful. So as long as you can aim, you will have no problem getting consistent headshots with the Baza or the Baza Prime. And you do want to go for headshots because there are hidden multipliers in Warframe. There's a headshot multiplier, a location-based multiplier, but if you want to read more into this, link the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on critical chance, critical damage, why do we go for headshots, why do we go for over 100% crit chance, etc. Getting back to the weapon at hand, however, this one is an absolute dream to use out of all the weapons I have used in Warframe, and I used all of them, this is the one that handles the absolute best, the Baza or the Baza Prime. In handling, there's really no difference between the two. So if you're looking for something a bit more user friendly, if you don't want your cursor to go all over the place and you are the sharpshooter type but you prefer something a bit more, well, <laughs> automatic, you're gonna be loving yourself your time with the Baza or the Baza Prime. The attack is hit scan, so even though the animation might look like some kind of projectile, it is hit scan and the reload, boom, done. 1.1 seconds on the Baza Prime and 1.4 seconds on the regular version with a magazine of 60 on the Prime and 40 on the regular. But let's have a stat comparison between the two because it is important to note the differences. At Mastery Rank 7, you can get your hands on the Baza, and at Mastery Rank 10, you can get the Prime variant. If it was me, I would just go for MR7 and get the regular, and then upgrade the Prime later on when I have enough resources. As you can see, the accuracy is the same, the ammo maximum is just 40 extra for the Prime. Falloff is better once again on the Prime, so while you do have that accuracy, keep in mind you are going to be losing damage past 30 meters on the Prime and 22 on the regular version. The same fire rate, bigger magazine, a larger magazine magazine on the Prime 60 instead of 40, it's silent, both of them are silent weapons, so if you want an automatic weapon for spy missions, definitely go this way. There are other ways to make your weapon silent, but this is a way to go about it, and the Baza for many years has been an extremely popular new player spy mission weapon kind of thing. Reload, like I told you before, 1.1 and 1.4, trigger automatic, that critical chance, 2% more on the Prime variant, instead of 26, you got 28, the same sky-high critical of 3.0, and the status chance 40% increase, 14 instead of 10, but the damage itself is identical, the layout and the total damage of 16. So as you can see, the Prime clearly is superior, but not by a whole lot. So if you already upgraded the regular version of the Baza, if you can't wait for the Prime, there's no problem whatsoever there. We're gonna be using both for this demonstration. When it comes to modding the weapon, you gotta go into actions and plug in an auto king catalyst to double that mod capacity. Yours will have 30 out of 30, mine has 60 simply because I put in a catalyst, after which you're gonna have to get the forming. Now I don't want you to be scared because mine have been formed 8 times, that's not important. For the weapon build I'm recommending you, you can get away with something like 2 to 3. I think on the prime variant you may only need 2 forma, for a optimal balance build, let's say. If you have something like galvanized mods, prime mods, or even ribbons for the weapon, you're gonna need a couple more forma. On the regular version of the Baza, I'm not gonna be unlocking the following 
the Excel slot as well as the Arcane slot, we're gonna keep these locked. You don't really need them, especially not on the regular version of the Baza. Now, we already went over stats, but Riven Disposition is worth pointing out. 3 out of 5 on both regular and prime. And just because they are essentially variations on the same weapon does not mean they will have the same Riven Disposition. This is sort of a coincidence, and it's not 100% the exact same disposition, it's kind of roughly there. The point is, Riven mods are 100% worth it on the Baza and the Baza Prime, and they're not horribly expensive either. If you're up until Mastery Rank 10, 12, something like that, don't bother with Rivens just yet. Leave them for the quote-unquote end game. I would just use regular mods for the time being. Riven mods start at Mastery Rank 8, and you're gonna need specific roles in order for them to actually be good. You see, this Riven disposition controls how powerful your Rivens are, or better said, can be. The more balls it has, the more stats you're gonna get on your Riven. That is, something like 20 critical chance or 100 critical chance. If it's got full 5 out of 5, it's gonna get more. If it has lower, it's obviously gonna get lower. And this Riven disposition is supposed to be controlled by weapon popularity. The more popular a weapon is, the lower the Riven disposition and vice versa. Now this was a uh, measure implemented by the developer a long time ago to give unpopular weapons a fighting chance at being used. And this Riven disposition is manually controlled by the developer every 3 months, 6 months, something of the sort we get an up Date to it and that's a kind of like a crash course on Riven mods and disposition. Now let's have a look at a standard build for the Baza and the Baza Prime. Damage Duration, Multi-Shot with Split Chamber and Vigilante Armaments. Coincidentally, Multi-Shot is the best thing on 99% of weapons and is your number one stat prior on Riven mods, yes. Critical Chance and Critical Damage for the use of Point Strike as well as Vital Sense. We're gonna pause just a second on Critical Chance because we need to talk about the following mod. Critical Delay, this offers you 200%, and 200% is more than 150%, but this one also takes away 20% of your fire rate. I wouldn't use this one in the case of the Baza, considering the fire rate, considering the magazine, considering how often you bump into that reload, I would keep it the point strike. But at the end of the day, it is more of a preference thing. So, if you want to go for Critical Delay over Point Strike, 100% do so. Keep in mind that Critical Delay is a corrupted mod. It gives you a whole chunk of something, but also takes away a bit of something. If you don't know how to farm corrupted mods, link the cards right now for a full guide on that. There are a lot, and I mean a lot of corrupted mods, awesome corrupted mods in Warframe that you will need, not just for your weapon builds, but for your Warframe builds as well. So get the farming, make that your prio one. Now we have a whole lot of crit, and if we had a whole lot of crit on the primary weapon, then Hunter Munitions becomes a mandatory mod. 30% chance to apply slash on critical. Now you see these slashes are damage over times, and they are the most powerful effect that you can apply to a target in Warframe. Well, the most powerful effect in terms of damage. This one couples great with vital damage, which is why we have the 260-60 mods, Rhyme Rounds, and Malignant Force, forming vital damage on our weapon. Check this one out. Vital status effect increases damage to health up to 325% with multiple stacks for a short duration. This is gonna amp up the damage from our slash a whole lot. So you see, this is kind of the meta right now in Warframe. If you need some kind of stereotype of what most players are going for when it comes to primary weapons, it's something like this. Now my friends, there is an option to this. If you head down to Deimos, if you reached Deimos by this point, you can get the following mod. It's called Argon Scope. And once upon a time, this would have cost you 300 plat, 500 plat, a whole lot of plat. Once upon a time, it was only accessible during the Acolyte event. Acolyte event, which is not a thing anymore. So you can get this one from Deimos, or you can simply trade it. I think it goes for about 10 to 20 plat, something of the sort. On headshot, 135% critical chance when aiming for 9 seconds. But in mind, it does have a modifier. Yes, you need to be aiming. That is your right click. I'm not sure what exactly you pressed on your controller. I think your right trigger, but I might be wrong. This is your option slot. For the time being, especially if you're newer to the game, keep it with Vigilante Armaments because these are all all the time on mods, unlike Argon Scope. Now, we're going to be testing the weapon like this, both the regular and the prime with the exact same build. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure that I don't skew my test results with anything like corrosive projection or a void school or anything of the sort. You see, there's a lot of factors when it comes to damage that can affect the outcome, and I don't want it to be misleading. Now, here's the thing. If your mastery rank 7 or 10, yeah, I doubt you're gonna be seeing level 120s. You're not really supposed to. Let's knock it down to 80. Yeah, I think this is a bit more realistic for the Baza and the Baza Prime. We're gonna take it one by one. 
these are corrupted heavy gunners. These are some of the toughest targets in Warframe. And as stated before, go for headshots. Look at that. Look at that absolute want of destruction. There are three slashes, six vitals, seven... A whole lot of procs on that target. And if you ever want to know exactly what a proc does, it's pretty simple. You take a look at your modding screen and they will normally be explained. Take a look at above his head. Seven slashes, four viral procs. Remember what we said, slash and viral, like two peas in a pod. And it can absolutely wreck a high level target, even for a basic standard build such as this one. Take a look. There are five slashes on that and four vitals ticking away at a target's health. Now you can leave the damage over time to finish off your target or you can keep on shooting. Normally the test for a slash weapon to see if it's effective, to see if it's actually worth using, hit a target till about 50% health, then watch the slashes do the job. And these are exogog stat. Even though these may look similar to these, to the Corrupted Heavy Gunners, these have a whole lot more effective hit points. They have more health and more armor, making them harder to kill. And even on these, a lowly MR7 weapon, such as the Baza, is essentially having a field day with them. Look at it. Look at this, 14 slashes, 10 vitals. For the record, you cannot go over 10 vitals attacks on a single target at a given time. That is the absolute maximum, which is why it's not worth it to go overboard with status chance just for vital alone. And our slashes are not coming from the weapon status chance, most of, most of them are coming from hunter munitions, even though you can still get some slash procs from the weapon slash value. You see the values here, these will control the proc priority. The highest value will have the largest proc priority. When a projectile makes contact with a target, if it's a single damage instance, it cannot proc multiple status effects unless that status chance is over 100%, and it's not. But let's say your status chance is 122%, then the same damage instance can proc both slash and vital, which would be insane, which would be fantastic, and on some weapons that is the case, but with our 22% chance, we're only going to be proccing one. Which one? Again, it depends on the damage values here. The highest proc priority is going to be slash, followed by puncture, after which impact and slash. Hopefully, you get how that one works. Hunter Munitions operates outside of this. It does not care about the status chance. It just wants crit. 30% chance when you crit. That's how this one works. That's why this one is so powerful, simply because it bypasses this whole status chance thing. Now we're gonna switch over to the Baza Prime. This is the exact same build we used on the regular version as well. Just so I can see if you can notice a difference when it comes to performance. We're gonna be spawning the exact same targets as before. These are level 80s and we're gonna start with the corrupted heavy goons as before. Go for straight headshots. Look at that. Now tell me, where do you see the difference in performance? Can you tell me, after a couple of shots, what is the biggest difference between the Baza and the Baza Prime? What's the biggest upgrade? Is it the critical chance? Is it the status chance? Can you see it? It's not. It's the magazine size. <laughs> the biggest upgrade is the magazine size. It's easier to kill consistently and perhaps the reload speed as well. So I don't really need to reload as often, which is somewhat of a big deal. But again, when you have a reload on 1.1 or 1.4 seconds, it's not an annoying thing to do. You do it automatically and you continue on playing with the weapon. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. So yes, the Prime is objectively better, but it's not a huge difference. And I love the accuracy and the gameplay feel on this one. This has always been the forte of the Baza and the fact that it is silent. So as you can see, you can just go for the regular version if you want to. It's not an issue whatsoever. Next up, we're going to be talking about a more souped up setup. If you're going to be maxing out a weapon, this is where we get past the new player portion, yes? You should unlock the Exodus slot and the Arcane slot as well, if you want to max out a weapon. And a maxed out build would look something like this. I'm still using points strike over critical delay. Again, that's something of a preference, considering I went over 100% crit chance. I don't really feel the need I should go for critical delay and sacrifice that fire rate. But it's fine to do so, since in Warframe you have an infinite number of tier crits. So going over 100%, over 200%, is totally fine. Now there are diminishing returns in Warframe but it's important for you to understand what type of diminishing returns. There is no built-in mechanic that says hey 
this is gonna do less damage now because you already did this or something of the sort. Now math has diminishing returns in the sense that if you add the same multiplier more and more and more of it, the more you add, the less you're gonna be getting from it. Think of it as a percentage, yes? So in essence, math has diminishing returns, not the game itself. The most powerful weapons in the game are the weapons that can access most if not all the multipliers available to you when it comes to damage amplification. Uh, status chance is important, damage, flat damage is important, uh, faction damage is important, essentially everything that you can get your hands on, if you can bundle it up in the same weapon, that's gonna be one hell of a weapon. We got Galvanized Chamber instead of the normal version because this one obviously more powerful. Galvanized Aptitude, amazing mod for the Baza Prime. Gotta have this one if you want a max out setup. Have a ribbon for this one. Multi-shot crit electricity, so I'm also gonna have some electricity procs on my targets. Let me make one thing clear. This is not an ideal ribbon for the Baza per se. That would be multi-shot critical damage and then it really depends on which way you wanna go. But the critical chance here wasn't 100% needed. Hunter Munitions as before, the 260-60 Fire Mods, and we also have Vigilante Supplies in the Excel slot, even though this one, even for a maxed out setup, can be left locked because you don't really need anything. Stabilizer is pointless. I mean, Vigilante Supplies in case you have ammo issues, and that's pretty much it. Primary Merciless, since most of our targets are going to be dying under the effects of Slash and Viral. And take a look at this one. With 30% reload speed that you get passively as soon as you equip an Arcane, or this Arcane in specific, the reload goes down to 0 0.8. How amazing is that? I love it. So let's, gonna be, let's test out the weapon like this. And we're going to do the whole comparison. Uh, normal versus Prime. I'm going to bump up the level though. I'm going to go to the usual benchmark that I use for these weapons. 120. This is a great benchmark to have. It's above sortie free and I believe it gives you a realistic expectation of what you can expect from the weapon to do in game. As before, Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120. This being a galvanized setup and with our arcane, in order for the weapon to be in full swing, we're gonna have to get a couple of kills. Take a look at all those blocks on your target. Beautiful. Absolutely freaking fantastic. Two kills. The more kills I get, the more multi-shot right now, more damage on my target. And after just a couple of takedowns, I already have a few stacks. Look at that. Look at the performance difference on that. Look, look at the health part essentially melt away. Damage instance after damage instance after damage instance. Not only that, while I'm shooting these targets, they can't really shoot back if they're dancing all over the place because of all the procs. Take a look. How amazing is that? And these are level 120s. They are significantly tougher than the 80s. Look at that. Beautiful, absolutely freaking fantastic. I love these weapons, even from afar, because, you know, I got the usability to do so. Though I think damage falloff might have come into play when it came to the last two corrupted heavy goons. Now, again, this kind of performance is not limited to the prime variant, and to prove that point, we're gonna go to the regular with the exact same build. Ooh, I forgot to unlock this one. There we go, now they're the same, and we're gonna go for the same targets as before, the level 120s. And then, my friends, we're finally gonna get to some gameplay in Steel Path. But first, let's see the performance difference between the regular and the prime. And as before, I'm gonna have to get a couple of kills in order to get uh, some damage on my targets. It's the caveat of a galvanized setup or arcanes and so on and so forth in Warframe. It's not a big deal because in missions, you're consistently gonna be getting kills on your targets. And uh, because Primary Merciless is so flexible, I should not have any issue in stacking damage consistently. And the weapon already is shredding targets. Look at that. Look at that. It's true, the big issue is the magazine capacity in this case in comparison, but as you can see, I have no issue in taking out my targets. It's essentially the same effect as before. I am melting health bars. Look at that. Boom, 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 and gone. Love the bleeds, damage over time, targets dancing, no problem whatsoever. Corrupted heavy goons in the distance, gone. You see, there's a point where the health bar just goes boom, and gone. Now, let's head on over to the path of steel. Welcome to the void, my friends, and we're gonna be fighting level 100, and what is that? 30 something corrupted. So, when it comes to corrupted, you got a little bit of everything, okay? You got the corpus, you got the grenier, you got the infested, you don't have the sentience, but the sentience are a different kettle of fish. We're gonna talk about them 
some other time. And as you can see, the Baza Prime shredding, shredding, my friends. Target to target to target. I guess you can blame the weapon for not having AoE, but you can put on a little bit of punch through. Now, granted, it doesn't transform it into an AoE weapon per se. It transforms it into what I like to say a multi target weapon. But as you can see, you're gonna have no problem in annihilating whatever stands before you. I don't even know what targets were there. I just kept on shooting and they all died. There were three of them, three of them. We're gonna be looking for a corrupted heavy goon because that one is a bit more tougher and all whatnot. It would showcase the power of the weapon quite nicely. This is an MR10 weapon. This is an MR10 weapon. I mean, look what it can do. You can run Steel Path with no problem. Granted, you may not run in the thousands, but still, you're gonna clear the entire Steel Path star chart without any issue with this weapon. Before us, my friends, we have the capture target, and the capture target usually has a whole lot more. E it's gone. It's gone. I didn't even get to finish my sentence. I was about to tell you guys that it has a whole lot more EHP and damage mitigation and things and stuff. But it just, the game didn't allow me. These are, these are annoying, the Orokin sentries. Would like for every weapon taken out, that Orokin sentry is a bit of a problem take damage over time on the thing, you see that? It's immune to freaking status effect. So do bear that one in mind. Now of course I can activate my Revenant 4 and kill everything, but why would I do that when I can do this? Look at this. Look at this. How cool is this? And you have, you gotta try the weapon to understand why it's so satisfying to use in actual gameplay. Corrupted Heavy Goon, absolutely annihilated, no problem whatsoever. This is what a standard weapon can do in Warframe. When you know exactly how to mod it, when you know exactly what are the strengths of weaknesses and what you can expect from said weapon. Now, I feel a little bit of doubt when it comes to the prime versus normal one, so what I'm gonna be doing is switching to the regular. Now let's see what it can do. No problem whatsoever in taking out the same enemies as before. As before, the sentry, however, does prove a little bit more problematic. Make sure you take out the ones which are floating. Now, these little sentries will offer a whole lot of damage mitigation to targets around you, so make sure you get them out of the way. The big one that is standing still is just annoying, and that's it. Again, hit it in the fanny pack when it comes to the when it comes to the MOAs. That's their vital point. There's more details in the critical chance and critical damage guide that I already linked you guys. Go for a headshot, as per the usual. With Daddy Revenant, they're standing still when they hit me because of Mesmer skin, and even with the damage attenuation from the Orokin drone, I have no problem in clearing out whatever stands before me. 1.1 second reload right now because of the Arcane on the regular version of the Baza, and it is the regular version of the Baza. Oh look, it's the capture target again. Hello, remember me? Don't go away. Stand still so I may shoot you in the head. That's it. That is it. No problem whatsoever. So as you can see, my friends, just because a weapon is not prime or anything of the sort does not necessarily mean it's a weak weapon. This is still a great weapon, a fantastic weapon in Warframe. And if this is the weapon you want to use, then this is what it's capable of. I highly recommend this weapon out of all the weapons I have used in Warframe. This is by far the best when it comes to usability and overall satisfying gameplay feel. Now when it comes to Warframe buffs, you can take it a whole lot higher than this because right now I'm using the Panzer Vulpophila to get some vital procs and Daddy Revenant to take care of the crowd control for my targets and my survivability. But if you want to go all out for Warframe damage, then there are a couple of Warframes that you could use. The most powerful when it comes to weapon buffs is gonna be Lady Mirage Prime. Because of how her Eclipse buff works, Mirage Prime is absolutely sensational. Now, she does have her weak points, her probability isn't really a thing with Mirage, and her consistency leaves a lot to be desired. So, if you're a more newer player coming to the game, I would suggest Rhino, especially for his survivability using Iron Skin, his crowd control using his 4 ability, and his roar that not only buffs you, your entire party, and is a whole lot more reliable. Not only that, it kind of acts like a faction mod. And since we're on the subject, let's talk a bit about faction mod. Mods. Now, faction mods give you a bit of damage to a particular faction. Earlier, when I was playing against the Corrupted, it would have been a good idea to use Prime Bane of the Corrupted, especially on a Slash build or a Damage Over Time build. So, if you're looking for an option to the Riven, hey, what can I use instead of the Riven because I don't want to get a Riven, I don't have a Riven, etc., etc., you can use something like a faction mod. 100%. As you saw there, I don't have Serration anymore on my build because I have plenty of sources of flat damage. Merciless and Galvanized Aptitude. You can replace the Riven with something like a Bane mod. If you don't like Bane mods like I don't like Bane mods, you can replace it with something like Serration or more Multishot. Now, back to the Warframe buffs at hand. Corrosive Projection against Heavily Armored Targets, aka the targets which are annoying to kill, is definitely the way to go, but I don't want you guys to feel forced into this one. 
If you're newer in Warframe, Energy Siphon will help you, uh, I want to say a whole lot, but that would be a lie. It helps you a little bit when it comes to consistently casting your abilities. I remember my time on Rhino and being frustrated by the fact that, oh god damn it, I don't have my, my energy again to cast abilities. It wasn't fun, and on Excalibur as well. What will help you more than this will be the Zenuric Void School, you hear me? Zenuric Void School for more energy. It's a very new player friendly Void School. And if you don't know what a Void School is, I can't tell you that without spoiling. So you're just gonna have to play and see. Arcane Avenger R5, take a look at this puppy. 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. This is an undamaged effect, a 21% chance, and it's a bonus additive after. This means it doesn't care about the base critical chance of a weapon. It can be 0%. It simply adds 45% on top of that. It's amazing, but wait, there's more. It applies to your primary, secondary, and to your melee, even your Argon, at the exact same time. Arcane Avenger is arguably one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, offensive arcane in the game if you need the cc multiplier the critical chance as for your second arcane honestly you don't really need this one for the weapon normally i suggest you take one arcane for your warframe your warframe build since we are playing you know warframe and the second one should be left for your weapon and i'm going to be taking this one off just to show you exactly what the weapon can do with a single arcane when it comes to companion buffs, there are two meta choices I want to say in Warframe right now. There's the Panzer Volpophila that you're going to be getting from Deimos, the same place. This one will be applying Vital Procs to your targets and is essentially immortal. Those are the two reasons we use the Panzer Volpophila. Another option is to go for a Sentinel, any Sentinel you want. The immortal Sentinel is called Jin. Without the D, the D is silent. There's a Jin here somewhere, I know I have. Yeah, yeah, the Jin. And this one essentially will keep coming back from the dead. The more important part that any Sentinel you choose, make sure that on that weapon you have the four Vigilante mods or just three of them in case you're using armaments or in case you're using supplies as well, just use two of them. You get the 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. Even if the Sentinel is kaput, you're gonna retain said buff. So bear that one in mind. Now, while these are the meta options, I do want to point out the Smita Kavat. The Smita Kavat has the charm buff, and when it comes to farming, and not only that, charm buff is goddamn important. So you want to have a Smita as well in your lineup. If you're a newer player, however, your priority is to get Helios. Get Helios and allow him to scan everything. After you get that, you can go for something like the Smita or the Vulpophila or whatever else it doesn't really matter yes but that should be roughly a priority for you now where was i oh yeah showing you what the weapons can do let's go with the regular version of the pause i don't have any problem with this we're gonna be spawning in max level well the, the level i can spawn maximum in the simulacrum 165 and we're gonna go to town we're gonna activate empower for mirage which incidentally is a helmet ability unlocking the helmet system should also be a priority for you because it unlocks many many possibilities for many many builds and finally her clothes uh, clones <laughs> like so go for a headshot as before my friend with the regular version of the baza my friend look at that red crits my friend remember there's only percent chance to enhance crits from primary weapons yes the red crits are orange crits which got enhanced Look at that, just bzzz, and dead from the damage over time. This is a truly amazing weapon. And yes, I am using the regular version of the Baza. Take a look at that. How beautiful is that? Now, you may have an allergy to reloading. Do you have that kind of allergy? Even on a 1.1 second reload? Well, in that case, there's an ability in the helmet section, section called energized munitions and that's gonna solve most of your reload problems it's gonna give you a whole lot of ammunition efficiency take a look at the range between me and my targets there look how far away i am no problem whatsoever and annihilating essentially whatever stands before you and in the shade i didn't even have the damage benefit there let's switch and do that one more time with the prime version just because it's fun go for headshots Oh man, I love the bigger magazine on this one. It's fantastic. But as you can see, I can mow down enemies just as easily as I can with the regular version. This again being objectively a bit better of a weapon. But you know what? If you already sunk a couple of forma into regular version of the Baza, please don't feel it's a waste. That's an amazing weapon. I mean, it has no problem in doing what this one does for the most part. This one just feels a bit more smoother because I have to reload less and the reload is a tad quicker but again we're talking about differences now that under a second it's not really that big of a deal 
Now my friends, it's time for me to draw some conclusions regarding the weapon. Uh, I, I can't be objective about the Baza. I, I can't. I love this weapon. I still believe it to be the most smoothest weapon experience in Warframe. And you know what? If you're a newer player coming to the game, especially if you're coming for more traditional style games, I don't know, Call of Booty or anything of the sort, then you're gonna be loving your time with this one. This is a solid weapon to have, especially if you need an automatic bow for uh, something like spy missions and all whatnot. Even though there are other ways to silence a weapon, this is a weapon worth experiencing. While it may not be one of the most powerful weapons in the game, it's not always about power. And in Warframe, you can draw power from a number of different sources. Try out the Baza. I promise you will not regret it. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. And if you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Essentially, if you want to see any type of weapon build, vote it. I want to see this weapon build or that weapon build. I will add them one by one to my list. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's going to be a link in the upper portion of the screen right about now. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And you can also join in our Discord community. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.